believe in the reign of righteousness. We believe in the reign of life. We believe, Lord. We believe. We believe. We believe. We know of a truth that sin and death will not prosper here. We believe with so much assurance of faith in our heart that even hell and death will not prosper here. We believe, we believe, we believe in the walk of righteousness. We believe in the walk eternal. We believe, we believe. Our heart is full of faith with so much assurance, full assurance of the acknowledgement of the mystery of that which you have wrought, our Father. We believe that righteousness will reign. In our lives, righteousness will reign. We believe that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. We believe, we believe, we no doubt in our heart, Jesus. Thank you, our Father. We give praise to your name, Lord. We give praise to your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name, our Father. We trust absolutely on you this evening, Jesus. We are helpless. I am helpless, I am weak, I come with so much trembling, heart, Jesus. I ask, Father, that you would help us this evening, show us mercy, O oh God, you communicate your life to us, you would move us forward again in your mercy, pray for the grace that is upon your servant, Set man of the house, our daddy, God's servant, Reverend Kade Egoke, will be upon this meeting strongly in the name of Jesus. Lord, the angel of this commission would bless this meeting under your authority in the name of Jesus. We will be blessed, every one of us, home and abroad, in the name of Jesus. You would minister to our heart, O oh God, and bring blessing our way, our Father, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, worship team. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of us are excited being here in the house this evening? Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, there are some cups that you never wish to drink. But unfortunately, you... You just have to drink it. You can't escape. Uh, when I saw Pastor Tayo, I was almost thinking, uh, just maybe I've escaped by the whiskers. <laughs> uh, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I uh, want to begin first by giving thanks to God for our parents in the faith. Uh, we would never stop doing this. We would um, never grow hold you know, doing this. You know, at times, one of the days, I was just imagining, you know, Pastor just imagine that uh, maybe we are in our 60s and we are still rubbing daddy's leg, which is, which is what we'll be doing. You know, by then, daddy will be probably like, I don't know, eh? in his 80s, thereabout, you know. Uh, I'm just imagining, picturing ourselves in a faculty, you know, as the old men, but well, we are young boys. <laughs> eh? Because why? We just love our daddy. We just love him. What the Lord has done in daddy, what the Lord, you know. Uh, at times I just picture myself, 60, 70, still driving daddy. Eh? And I won't be tired of doing it. Or oh, you think a 70-year-old man cannot drive? He's sin that made us like this. Eh? You know, as if Pastor Yaw was saying in one of the days, the way it was sin that our body responded to that became like this. So if the body can respond to sin and become like this, if the body responds to righteousness, it will become better. It was just a law called the law of sin and death that broke our body down. That God said, okay, man, you can never live now and again. Just come down to 120. After 120, sin still walked upon that body. They limited it again to 70. If by strength, you crossed to 80. Eh? So body responded to sin and death. It became like this. Body can respond to righteousness. And they'll be begging the body. You know, Jesus had to tell Peter. Peter said, they've told me when I would drop this body. For him, it's just removing a suit. They've told me when I'll remove this shirt and I'll come to heaven. Eh? You see, that kind of body has responded to life. The guy can decide to stay. 
It can just be here 200 years, 500 years. We think it's impossible. Yeah? We think it's impossible, but it's very possible. So 70-year-old, 80-year-old, and he's still driving. And I will still drive. I will drive. I will drive daddy. Because I know daddy is going to be here for a long time. How long? I don't know, but he's going to be here for a long time. But you see that daddy I'm seeing? Eh? Eternal life like this will walk upon the face of the earth in a man. In a man. I mean, I believe you so strongly. In a man. Praise the Lord. So I, I want us to, you know, can we raise our hands and give thanks to God, our Father in heaven, the Father of glory that has given us such a gift as Reverend Kaode Oyegoke. Can we give thanks to God also for our mommy, mommy Helen, how the Lord paired this couple, how the Lord brought them together. So much mercy God showed a generation by raising for us a father and a mother. In the scripture, I said, look unto, 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 unto um, Abraham, your father, and to Sarah from where you were hewn. We have a place where we were hewn from. We were hewn from Reverend Kyle Deo Yegoke and Reverend Helino Yegoke. Can we lift up our hands consciously and give thanks to our father? Jesus, we thank you for this work. Thank you for your work that you have wrought in a man. Thank you for that which you did in a man. Thank you for the seasons of buffetings. Thank you for the seasons of breakings. Thank you for the seasons of making. Thank you for what you did in Reverend Kayode Oyegoke and Reverend Elin Oyegoke. We give praise to you, our Father. We rejoice as a generation. Thank you for this gift, this great gift, heavenly gift to our generation. We give praise to you, our Father. Our heart rejoices. Our heart is full of thanksgiving. Our heart is full of thanksgiving for what you have done in them for how you heal them for how you led them for how you made them how you caused, caused Christ to prosper in them and how you are causing everlasting life to prosper in them how you would also cause eternal life to prosper in them father we are grateful Jesus we are grateful we say thank you thank you our generation is saying thank you to you on behalf of our parents thank you Jesus thank you for raising a man thank you for raising a man Man. Thank you for raising a man even in our generation. Thank you for calling them out. Thank you for putting your name upon them. Thank you for this couple of righteousness. Thank you for this couple of everlasting life. Thank you for this couple of eternal life that you have raised in this generation. We are grateful to you, our Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we are, we are grateful. We are grateful. If peradventure all the hairs on our head were thongs, they are not enough to thank you for this that you've done for a generation, for how you've changed every one of us by raising your servant, for the seasons of the buffeting that he never ran away, he stayed. He endured the pain. He stayed. He stayed. He endured the shame. Contradiction of sinners. Contradiction of brethren. He stayed. Thank you. Jesus, we are grateful. Thank you for the work you wrought in them. We are grateful to you. Eternally, we will forever be grateful. Eternally, we will forever be grateful. And we say thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Uh, in the same vein, can we just give thanks to God sincerely also from our heart for God's servant, our pastor, Pastor Emeka Eguchuku and Pastor Lilian Eguchuku. The Lord has also raised them. The Lord has allowed them, you know, to go through the crucible and they've stayed. Can we consciously lift our hands to heaven? Thanking Jesus for raising Pastor Emeka. You know, one thing, one thing, praise the Lord. One thing that is, that is peculiar about pastor, which from there, I want us to give thanks. Is that pastor was able to bring the pastoral dimension eh, of this word. You know, daddy is an apostle. Now, you need a pastor for these things to be embodied in the life of men. Many of us would have found it impossible to relate with the things that daddy is saying. But a pastor, they to now bring the pastor to now be pastoring us one by one. Are we together? So can we consciously give thanks to God that the Lord raised a pastor, that the Lord raised a shepherd in his servant, Pastor Emeka Eguchuku and Pastor Lily and Eguchuku, that the Lord raised them, walked upon them, decked them, led them, 
dealt with them, broke them for a generation. Father, we are grateful. Father, we are grateful. Father, we are grateful. Father, we are grateful. People have said that you cannot pastor with the word of righteousness. But the Lord raised his servant, Pastor Emeka Eguchuku, raised him, raised him. And now we are seeing many churches after the order of the word of righteousness. Many churches springing up. Many churches springing up. TLS springing up. City Gate, uh, Love Seal. Many churches. Many churches pastoring after the order of the word of righteousness. Can we give thanks to God for our pastor, Pastor Emeka and Pastor Lili and Eguchuku. Father, we give praise. We give praise to you. We give praise to you. We thank you. We thank you. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your servant. Thank you for your servant. Thank you for your handmaiden. Thank you for our mommy, mommy Lili and Eguchuku. We give praise to you, our father. Glory to your name, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, can we also give thanks to God for all our pastors in the house, starting from God's servant, Pastor Thompson, Ehima. Can we lift up our hands and give thanks? I want us to just consciously give thanks. You know, I'm just seeing thanksgiving welling up in my heart this evening for all our parents and our pastors. Can we give thanks to God for Pastor Thompson, Ehima, and Pastor Dupe, Ehima? Can we give thanks to God in the same vein for our pastor, our daddy in the house, Pastor Tayo Fasson, and Pastor Meg Fasson? Can we give thanks to Jesus? Jesus. Can we give thanks to Jesus? Can we give thanks to Jesus for our pastor, Pastor Kenneth Eyano Hore and Pastor Fumi Eyano Hore? Can we give thanks to Jesus? Can we lift up our hands consciously and say, Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. These ones, they followed your servant when nobody would have followed, when people would have turned back. They followed. They kept following. They kept following. When it did not make sense, they kept following. Jesus, we thank you. Can we give thanks also to God for our pastor, Pastor Pastor Moses Amokafe and Pastor Biodu Amokafe, can we give thanks to Jesus? Oh, Father, we give praise to you. We give praise to you for these ones that endured. They endured the season of it and they stayed. We give praise to you, our Father. We give thanks to you, oh God, for our daddy in UK, Daddy Lamikora, Pastor Ludotu Lamikora, and Pastor Mrs. Sufama Lamikora. Can we give thanks to Jesus? Can we give thanks to Jesus? Father, we give praise to you, our Father. We worship you, Jesus. Thank Thank you, thank you, thank you. Glory to your name, our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You will know the reason why I'm saying we should give thanks. You know, many of us now, the work to a great extent has taken a lot of shape. It's easy for a lot of people to identify with the work now. A lot of people. Now, I see those times when these people that I'm saying give thanks to God for, when they were following daddy, you won't follow daddy. You won't. We won't. Because there was no form, no comeliness. We would have turned back. So they bought the heat of the day eh, for us so that we can easily come and follow. You know when you see Pastor Tayo Fasson? If your head wants to go like this, you would correct Pastor Tayo is following. Follow. Are you okay? Eh? You see Pastor Ken, you just see a rock standing. So when you think you are being moved, you just. Uh, Pastor Ken, he's still standing. Eh? I'm standing. I'm not going anywhere. But they burn the heat of the day. So we should give thanks to God for them. Hmm? See when daddy keeps talking about Pastor Moses? He said there were many that came. Eh? They ran away. They ran. But you see Pastor Moses? Consistent, staying, growing. Ah, you know that that man? See, Pastor Moses is not the old Mike preach like us. But waiting there on top of your head. Hmm. Pray that will be discerning now. Eh? I was telling some folks that came around to the house one time. I said, Jesus had how many disciples? How many? How many? How many of them do you really remember their name? Eh? Hey, Peter, James, John, Oton. How many do we remember their name? Just three. But you see, the other ones, you think they are not foundation apostles? You will be deceiving yourself to think. You see, carnality gave us sense of wrong judgment. You just see this one. Okay, this one is not preaching. <laughs> so I'm, not, I'm not interested in this one. Yeah, hey, hey, anointing. Hey, I like this one. Eh? They were 12. Jesus didn't say the foundation of the world to come is three. He said it's 12. So all of them, even Thomas. That, you know what we preach concerning Thomas? Pastor said even Thomas. So he said, doubting Thomas. Doubter. 
Was it? Sir? Pastor said the cup he took. That cup, you can't drink it. You know, we think it's easy to follow Jesus. You can't follow a man of contradiction. The man was leading with many controversies. Plenty all around him. Everything about him was controversy. Number one, his mother. We don't know where he saw the pregnancy. Nobody knew. Even Joseph. When they say Joseph is a good man, we don't understand it. Because what made Joseph good? If it's us now, it will be Instagram everywhere. Woman brings strange baby to the husband yet to be married. All over. Ha! Ah, we get girl. Only rock or then so talk. She won't say the truth. All these girls, I know. And the lady said, "Is Holy Ghost? Which Holy Ghost? Where? Instagram will be full. Twitter will be full. Facebook will be full. Everywhere, our story will be trending. If that child is born, another trending will start. So we think it's easy to follow Jesus. You know, you can follow a man that they can trace. You, they can trace, but." When they look at disciples, of all people to follow, of all, is this Jesus that you want to follow? Do you know truly, truly, it wasn't Joseph that is his father? No. They say it's Joseph's his father. No, it's not his father. Oh. It's because you don't know the story. Sit down. Let me tell you the story. <laughs> eh? So you see those men you saw? They are 12 apostles. Eternally. They are apostles of the Lamb. Paul, with the writing of to third of the, of the epistle, is not the apostle of the Lamb. So the Thomas, the doubter, is a foundation in the world to come. Eh? You need Thomas for your building to stand. So, Sin gave us a, a wrong judgment of, judge, of judging people or judging things. And that's one of the things that righteousness wants to do. They want to bring judgment our way. They want to bring how to accurately judge. They want to bring it our way. So when I'm saying give thanks to God for, you know, at times you just say, Pastor Moses, okay, I'm just giving thanks. What is he doing? <laughs> give thanks. <laughs> just give thanks. Ah, ah, you see where they stand? I can't stand there. I can't. Not this one is not. I'm uh, trying. I'm not making out. I know I can't stand there. I can't. It's not. It's not. I'm joking. Okay, maybe he's trying to be humble. I don't. You know we are humble in this place. No, it's not humility. It's not humility. I can't stand there. It's possible if I had met Daddy in his raw state, I won't be here now. I might not have been able to bear it. Pastor, sir, how many people were able to bear it then? Eh? Somebody used to go and say he's organizing a meeting for daddy. He's carrying his Bible. See this Bible that everybody's carrying now, that brother by is doing? Some people were doing it before. They ran away. Somebody closed his ministry. He left the ministry. He came to serve Reverend from Portacot. Eh? When he came, and he's got that. <laughs> He said, old man, we got to cry. The guy cried. Why was he crying? No, nothing in this place. This place is dry. It's like desert. The guy ran away. <laughs> eh? He ran. He ran. So let's, let's be wise. Let's be wise. Praise the Lord. Uh, can we thank God also for our pastors, my eggbones in the spirit, starting from our class captain that has left us alone. Just left us. You see, he's sitting there. I'm seeing him, but he has run. <laughs> yeah? He left us alone. I know he's seeing me. He le- see, your seat is here. You ran away. Come back to your seat. <laughs> yeah? Can we just give thanks to God for them? Pastor Tokwe Falaye, Pastor Ayo Mosei, Pastor Tunji Adegoke, uh, Pastors, uh, the lead prayer, Pastor Sam Auta, Pastor Kolade Ojo, uh, Pastor Michael Luwale, Pastor Michael Gwoye, Pastor Leke Omilano, 
all our pastors, all our pastors, Pastor Toluwa Lashe, Sonia Olu, can we give thanks to Jesus for all our pastors, Pastor Lady Olanio, can we give thanks to Jesus for all our pastors. Father, we give praise to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Don't mind me. I'm trusting the Lord that the Lord will help me this evening. What to say, I know not. But, you know, me, I'm not like a Pastor Kwe. Pastor Kwe is a, is a preacher by excellence. When you hear Pastor Kwe, your life, you just, you just be happy. Yeah? At times, some people, they, they like, they want to preach. Me, I like some people, I just want to be hearing. I remove preaching from my life. Let me just be hearing them. And my life will be okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm just trusting the Lord this evening um, to just strengthen our hearts, you know, along the line. Um, our parents and our pastors has been, they've been teaching just to, um, just further strengthen us so that we can properly focus. I always like this scripture so much at times when I have the opportunity to minister like this. Um, when he talked about, uh, what's the name of this, uh, this brother that came to the church and said, he um, exhorted them that with purpose of heart that they should cleave to the Lord. Can you give me that place in the book of Acts? Quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I trust absolutely on you this evening, Jesus. I rest on you, Lord. I need help. I need help. I need your help. And I know you are the very present help in the time of need. Jesus, help me. Help me to be able to communicate your thoughts to your people this evening in the name of Jesus. I will not speak outside of your thought. I will not speak outside, outside of your counsel to your people this evening. Help me to stay on the authority. Help me to stay on the authority, on the appearance in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. He said, well, when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exalted them all, that with purpose of heart, they would cleave to the Lord. So I'm trusting the Lord this evening. Um, find grace to um, just encourage us with purpose of heart. We'll be able to cleave to that which our parents, the Lord is arousing through our parents in the name of Jesus. You know, one of the things that I think was Pastor Thompson on Thursday ministry, maybe I'll just start from there. One of the things that we need to understand is that man, what we call man, and what we see as man now, is not just a fallen man. Eh? He's a man that is still fallen. Are we together? Hmm? You say we say man is fallen. Now, man's descent is still continuing. Eh? And that's why you see that some level of quote-unquote thoughts, judgments, that people would look back and say, in the 80s, men don't think like this. Now, was it that the 80s men were not falling? Eh? They were not falling. Was it that the men in 60s, they were not falling? Eh? Was it see, the descent of man is still continuing. It's not a descent that has stopped from the day that man partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Man's downward turn kept on going and it has not stopped. So when we think, we should not come to the place of conclusion thinking that it is just me thinking. A lot of things are responsible for our conclusion. A lot. Many things frame you up that make you come to a conclusion upon a matter. For me to decide, for example, that the color I like is pink, as little as it is, I don't like blue. I'm just a pink man. A lot of things came into my conclusion. And unfortunately, many of them are not wired around life. 
a lot of them are not wired around light. What informs that decision or that conclusion are men, in fact, if possible, many times, 1900 out of 100. I know the Lord is saving us. A lot of us, the Lord has delivered us so much. But I'm saying the natural man. Eh? A lot of times, 100 out of 100. What will make the man come to conclusion that this is what he wants is born out of darkness. For example, what would make a sister? Sorry. I'm a sister lover. Alas, I am married. I married one, so I love sisters. What would make a sister come to the conclusion that because he's shoe, he's shoe, he's not looking classy, and even the way he dress, this guy, his present does not have future. He is present, does not have future. Eh? And by the reason of that conclusion, you say, I don't want to have anything to do with this brother. Even if the Holy Ghost is saying, Holy Ghost, can you marry him? Eh? So, what is the, the sum total of that person's conclusion? Is born out of darkness. It's possible that if Jesus were to be on earth and he's a brother looking for a sister, if we take away anointing from him, healing everything and all those things, a lot of people will not marry Jesus. Yes, eh? Pastor, Pastor Mike said he doesn't have a house. <laughs> he doesn't. Alas, they came to him and said, I want to follow you home. Pastor, I want to follow you. Say, yeah, follow me. Now that bridge I didn't sleep. Oh. So you would look at him, and he's not a man that has a future. Because already something has informed us of what is called a future. So by default, we know in ourselves what we think future to be. So from that, from that world of thoughts. You know, Pastor was teaching on Tuesday. He talked about the young girl. He said, I will fetch word from afar. Where we fetch word from, our own bank of fetching word, those words are words embedded and encoded with darkness. So when we fetch it and we use it, the only thing it will generate is darkness. So we come to conclusions about matters. Some will say, for example, I stay in a house. I can't be caught dead. Papa, sin is so wicked. I can't be caught dead using this kind of a stove. And by that, you would almost die, kill yourself, break all the laws of life just to use gas cooker. Because there is something that has informed us that with the use of gas cooker, your status has changed. Subconsciously. You know, these are things that we do every day of our life. Normally. You know what I was saying while ministering one of the days? He said, a lot of us would despise Yekini, the vulcanizer. Is that not true? Why do we despise Yekini? Would Jesus despise Yekini? His present, Pastor Ayo said his present does not have future. <laughs> eh? You just look at the man, you look at the brother, you look at the sister, or you look at the person, and you feel this person does not have what it takes that I should relate with him or her. So you see, when Paul was saying in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17, he said this, I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you, henceforth, walk not as other Gentiles walk 
in the vanity of their mind. So meaning if you bring a gentile today and you break his mind, if it's possible, let's say his mind is a glass cup or a container and you're able to break it open. When you open it, the only thing you see inside his mind is vanity. Pick any innocent thoughts that is just walking around his mind. Just pick it, vanity. You throw it away. You know, they do um, this shaking of eh? raffle draw and they shake and say, just pick anyone. If they tie all the papers in the mind of a Gentile, you know, raffle draw, all the papers are not the same. One can be shoe, one can be car, one can be anything. But if you tie all the papers in the mind of a Gentile, you tie all the papers, you pick the first one, open it, vanity. Pick the second one, open it, vanity. Pick up to 1,000, all you will see is vanity. So a Gentile is framework. What's what framed him up is a vain mind. So when he thinks, he can't think beyond vanity. And somebody did that work. Somebody made the man called Gentile, made him toss. Made him Gentilic in his mind. He said this, I said, therefore testify in the Lord that you henceforth, you henceforth. Now, for believers, there is a stop of gentilic work. So if I am not responding to this stop, I can be born again, which our parents have taught us over and over and over again. I just feel I should just strengthen us again to, we have a, you know, daddy, daddy said one, one of days when he was ministering, he said this should be our ambition. This should be our quest. I should wake up in the morning and I should be thinking, this throne is real. Is not cunningly devised fable. You see that the laboring and that the teaching? If you like, don't take eternal life. You see, God's servant, I see. All he wants is eternal life. If you like, tell him that what he's saying is not true. He's your cup of tea. Oh. He knows what he's saying is true. <laughs> Pastor, sir, at times, you know, when we read Bible history or church history, we should learn a lot from it. How many of us remember William J. Seymour? Eh? When J. Seymour was preaching about baptism of the Holy Ghost, was he the first to receive it? Eh? Was he the first to receive it? We've not read history. He wasn't the one. He was just convinced that it was true. Because of it, they sent him out. Because of it, they excommunicated him. He kept preaching it. He believed it so strongly. This thing is true. I've read it in scripture and I believe it. And he kept staying there. He kept preaching it. He kept preaching it. One day, somebody spoke in tongue. Now, before then, it looks like an impossibility that can never happen that somebody will speak in tongue. So for us now, we are thinking somewhere. Sin looks like something that can never be stopped. You know when you look at the strength of sin? Also, it looks like it can't be stopped. Eh? Somebody sent a clip one time recently, and I heard it. And I was like, ha. It, it was a pastor. They asked him. He said, this issue of, uh, he, said, he said, everything you can stop. He said, but that fornication thing. Ah. He said, Lagos looks like he's charged with fornication. <laughs> he said, the atmosphere of Lagos is like he's charged. Electric charge is fornication. He says, so whether you like it or not, bah, you just know where you will do it. You will know where you do it. It's a lie. I just kept hearing that song playing over and over and over in my heart. Sin reigned. And because sin reigned, we've come into a very strong belief. Because a belief is a delusion, but it's a belief. Because Satan also had to. When you say, you are convinced about something. We just come to a place of conviction, knowing that this thing cannot stop. And somewhere, he has also successfully, to a great extent, delude and make a lot of people believe that some things are impossible on this side of eternity.
two witnesses before we look at other witnesses in the scripture. Eternal life has once stepped foot upon this earth before in the person of God himself in Genesis. He landed on it. He said, I heard you, I heard you walking in the garden. So he landed on it. That was God. Jesus carried everlasting life as a man, finished the curriculum of eternal life. He went to hell. The first place he landed before going to heaven was earth. The first person he spoke with was a prostitute he turned. Not even the apostles. The first person that he saw when he was living hell as an eternal being. The first person he saw that he opened his eternal mouth to talk to. The first person was a prostitute that Jesus turned. And Jesus was sure that that life has so turned that he, she can take an eternal utterance. Because the person talking to that woman, to Mary, is eternal. That's God. That's God in flesh. Eh? It was that same God when he went, he went to heaven, purged heaven, came back, was eating fish. Entering into houses, telling them, touch my hand. I am flesh and bone. Touch it. Is God walking upon the face of the earth? So, sin. You know, something was just playing in my heart this evening. I was in the room. The last person in the house wanted to go out. says, okay, I have to stay with the kids. So I came to the parlor. They were watching the story of Moses and the Ten Commandments. So I was just watching with them. And Holy Ghost was telling me, he said, sin is so weak. I will breed myself and miss sin and destroy sin. Eh? So Pharaoh said, kill all the children. Kill all of them. It was in his house. They grew what would destroy it. Eh? Sir? What will crumble that civilization? It was in his own house. It was a raisin called Pharaoh. But it was in his house that they crumbled. They raised what would kill him in his house. So when Jesus is saying that the light will shine in darkness. And darkness cannot resolve it. He can't comprehend it. He can't understand it. He doesn't have breakthrough concerning it. He will just be looking helpless. Why they will grow it? And he would help in growing it. It was Adadi Dalai Lama that always said that. Satan is the number one worker of God. Eh? When they are looking for workforce in heaven, the first person they found is Satan. What was he doing? Raising what would destroy it. So don't ever, ever, ever think that issue of sin cannot stop in this your body. Don't ever. Don't ever. That's what I, I trust. I'm trusting the Lord that will just trust God to see this evening. Don't ever. Don't, don't let it be a thought that will cross your mind that maybe I will just manage with this infirmity and escape. No, I'm not managing with any infirmity. I would be raised here. I would destroy it here. And I would beat him. So he was in the house of Pharaoh. Pharaoh fed Moses. Bought diaper for him. Bought Serilac. Sent him to school. The best school. Used his money to train him. Eh? And after he has raised him fully, he came to destroy him. So you see, God is not afraid of your infirmity. Eh? God is not afraid. 
And they say, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe his cause pastor doesn't even understand that this is my own. Ah, they must not hear it. Oh. If they hear this is my own, ah, ah, this is my own has no redemption. <laughs> I'm sure God will just look at you and laugh. Because the thought he wants to bring is the thought of from the beginning. Satan was not, he's not a from the beginning man. He has a beginning. How do I know? Scripture said it. He said, the day thou was created. So they say, he has a day. He has a birthday. Eh? So they knew when he was born. The person that wants to feed us, to deliver us from him, knew when he was born. He doesn't know when God was born. And nobody can know it. Because he doesn't have a birthday. So the thoughts they want to bring our way is the thought that has no birthday. Mm. Eh? The thought that has no beginning, that has no ending. The thought that no spirit can trace. When you see the, the strand of that thought, you wonder, I've never seen this kind of thing before. This is an anomaly in the matrix. Ah, what kind of Sir, I don't know this code and I don't understand it. In fact, this code is causing a glitch in my code. I'm already shaking because I don't understand this code. It's going to destroy me now. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Sin will see us and run. Because, you see, I want us to, some things need to sink deep. God's servant is not, you see, the labor of God's servant, God, that is not just laboring because. He wants to, he's, he, daddy has gone past shining. He's not interested in it at all. For what? That he's the man that knows how to enter the book of Revelation. No. It's what he's bringing. What he's bringing is bringing what would delete, obliterate, remove, dis, dis, discombobulate, confuse, scatter sin completely. That when sin sees that thought, he said, they are bringing this sin again. They are bringing this sin again. Hey, what we do? We can't do anything. Alas, they are helpless. Because if God decides to do what he did with Jesus again, and again, and again, in fact, a thousand times, sin will still fall prey. With joy and with excitement, super excitement, he will still go and kill Jesus again. And when he do it, finish, hey, I've killed myself again. They will repeat it again. He will do the same thing again. Because the person bringing the thought, I want us to see the beauty of the thought of life. How strong that thought is. That, that you can think of what is called the everlasting life. First walk. Last walk. Your mind is wired thinking so there are walks in everlasting life. There's what is called the corn of the land. What is this thing? Your mind is wired thinking those thoughts. What they are doing is they are, they are making sin difficult to stay in your mind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. You know I said when you look at the, the mind of a Gentile, mm -hmm. you wrap a thousand papers in his mind. Mm -hmm. Every one of them is written with the same thing. It's vanity. Eh? But you see, when they begin to bring these thoughts our way, when these thoughts begin to visit us, what these thoughts are doing is that they are, they are changing what is wrapped in that paper. So very soon, you just see that you pick a thought in your mind, righteousness. Before you know it, you pick another thought, righteousness. Before you pick it, you pick it, life. You pick another one, everlasting life. Before you know it, you just see that all the papers are all changed. You can't think vain again. Vanity has been deleted. The thing has gone so far away from the mind. And that's why we need to believe what is being said. Kai! Hebrews chapter 3. We need to believe what is being said. We need to come to the place of full assurance. You know, times of you, hey, this thing is true. Ah, hey, there is crown for you in heaven. Ah. 
This is beyond even the crown in heaven. <laughs> you know there's a way you can even relate to the crown in heaven. <laughs> eh? <laughs> Sir? <laughs> Carnally. <laughs> you just relate with the crown in heaven. Maybe one of these you are just watching a video. Harmlessly. You're just watching the video of Orne of Ife. And you see the way the guy is there. He says, Kai, very soon. All my waiting will pay out. One day I'll have my crown. I'll wear my robe. They will also know that I'm beautiful. No. What they are calling us to come and deal with hmm? is, I think it's Pastor that you say it. I always love you when Pastor say that thing. That sin has a day, a minute, a second, one, a particular time, a microsecond, millisecond, that it will be expired. He has expiry dates. He has expiry dates. So don't be, don't be, don't take the frame, mind frame that I think I'll just remain like this. Maybe if I can even just get to faith of Christ. That's not what God says. What they want you to get to is eternal life. Titus chapter 2. He said, in hope of eternal life. Which God who cannot lie. The person that promised it cannot lie. And he promised it before the world began. It's a promise to as many as are ready to receive that promise. So if you begin to judge yourself by the fact that you have a brother in a particular local assembly, a particular church, a particular denomination, a particular sect, and you feel, okay, this person, uh, well, uh, but he's not even pursuing eternal life. And guys, yeah, he's doing okay. He's even a very serious believer. Very, very straight guy. I had a, a friend in school there. We call, we call him Brother Napo. So when you see Brother Napo, you know you've seen a brother. Yeah? We had some, I won't mention the assembly, we had some sisters that they go to the same church, then they go to the same church with this Brother Napo. So, because me, yeah, if normal church guy, you know, I was a redeemed. I wear my jeans and I was a happy Christian, enjoying my life. I was my normal, just enjoying myself. These sisters never talk with me. Once they see me, they just excuse themselves. Hey, can I, brother? Hell, I wait you. But the tide changed. The day. I became friends with Brother Napo. We now became very close friends. So they wonder, this Jesus brother, how can he become friend with Brother Napo? Maybe I just saw one of them come to me to what they say, good afternoon, sir. I say, hey, wow. <laughs> brother Napo can change things. Sin as an expiry date. Sin as when it will end. So you can't conclude and judge yourself by the fact that you look at another brother, another believer in another denomination, in another sect, and you feel, well, in another local assembly, the word sect, forgive me, we are not sectarians. We are not sectarians. We are not sectarians. Jesus has one body. Not one sect. He's one body. And we are part of that body. In our spirit, we are all Jesus' body. It's in our soul that we are in different pastures. Eh? You know, when a shepherd, there are many shepherds in Nigeria. Don Deno. They are, what's, what's Deno? They are Deno. <laughs> eh? They are watching after their flocks. Eh? But you see, each one of them have their different pasture they feed upon. But you see, you will not look at one and say, this one is a shepherd and this one is not a shepherd. You all call all of them shepherds. But they have different pasture where they feed upon. Do you understand? So we are not a sect. Forgive me that I use that word. We are not a sect. We are all part of the body of Christ. Eh? And we have different pastures we feed upon. The Lord has moved us for the sake of the body. Moved us. Because we are not, we, Daddy has said it, we are not special. We are not different. Whatever we are doing is also for the sake of the body. Are we together? Yes, sir. For example, Jesus gave an, a parable. He said, um, he went into the, into the uh, what's it called now? 
He went out, he called the first people, is it the third hour of the day or the third, sixth, ninth hour? And, and some came eleventh hour. Now, all of them, did they do a different work? They all did the same work. But you see, the people that started first, scripture said they were the ones that bore, they bore the heat of the day. Now, if those ones that started first didn't bore the heat of the day and do what they are meant to do well, those ones that came last, which is also supposed to be part of the work, because the, the, the reward is the same, which is eternal life, is one penny. They are not giving anybody different reward. It's just one reward, it's one penny. What Jesus agreed with, the day you gave your life to Jesus, or you got born again, what he agreed with you is one penny. So if you choose to lose your one penny because you are looking at another person, you are looking at another person, you are doing yourself a great disfavor. Because what he agreed with you, the day you came and said, I want to surrender my life to Jesus, he agreed one penny with you. And that's eternal life. Only one thing. He didn't, he didn't agree plenty things, just one. So you see, our pursuit should be pursuit of that one thing. We should not pursue any other thing other than, he said, he said this, this not thou agree with me for a penny. Next verse. Take that thine is and go thy way. And I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Let me have the next verse. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Is than I evil? Because I am good. So if you keep looking at another man's pasture, another brother that, you, that the Lord has his own timing for, you know Paul said very clearly, he said, when it pleased the Lord, who had separated me from my mother's womb? He, where did he separate? He said he separated me from my, to reveal his son in me. He called me by his grace. So, see when God has separated Paul from his mother's womb. Now, this same Paul was killing believers. Now, another person will, because of Paul, backslide. I said, he's killing Christians. I'm tired. I'm not doing it again. I'm, not, I'm going. And alas, after you backslide, you see that Paul in eternal life. You've just lost your own penny. So the penny they've given us now, fight to keep it. Hold it very well. Hebrews chapter 3. Are we being blessed? I hope I'm not. Hebrews chapter 3. Just some few scriptures then. I'm trusting the Lord I would close early so that we can have a lovely time in church tomorrow. Hebrews chapter 3. Um, from verse 12. From verse 12. He said, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Of course, we know the living God is a season of everlasting life. Is that correct? So this season, one of the things that Satan is going to push out or push forth is what is called an evil act of unbelief. And somewhere we don't even know what this evil act of unbelief is. This thing is stronger, bigger than what we think it is. Eh? <laughs> they call it evil art of unbelief. Let's, let's see that Hebrews chapter 2 before we continue here. You know the first thing Paul Right into the church in Hebrew. First thing he said in that verse 12 was take heed. He said, therefore, we need to give the honest, more earnest heed, heed, that same word, heed, to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of the word, he said, then how shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, meaning when we neglect so great, so great salvation, we are also going to receive a just recompense. Eh? If we neglect it, if we neglect it, because it's also great salvation is also a word. It's also a word that is being spoken. Because if the word spoken, there is a word spoken by angel. If it was steadfast and every transgression. And disobedience received a just recompense. We cannot escape the recompense 
if we neglect what is called so great salvation. So Paul, in, chapter two, in verse 1 of chapter 2, began saying to them, therefore, give the more earnest heed. So Paul writing, saying to them in um, uh, the church in Hebrew, chapter 3, verse 13, said, verse 12, he said, take it, brethren. Now, I want us to look at something. They see that word transgression. Transgression is another word for disregard or to violate. Now, when scripture called it evil out of unbelief, the thing around this unbelief thing is that it creates a scenario in your heart for you to doubt the authenticity of what is being said. I'll give an example. It's also another word for deceit. In verse 13, it talked about the deceitfulness of sin. Give him Matthew chapter 13. Is it Matthew chapter 13? The parable of the sower, the place he talked about the deceitfulness of riches. I want to just tie some things together then. we we'll just trust the Lord to um, bring this to a close by God's grace. Matthew 13. I think it should be 13. Is it 13? Yes. He said, okay, he also that received the seed among thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of this word and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. You see, what is this deceitfulness of riches? It's different from deceitfulness of sin. The sinfulness of riches attack Christ's company. Yeah? Because it is in Christ we talk about riches. Give me Colossians chapter 1, verse Colossians 1, 27. Just Colossians 1, not Hebrews 3, Hebrews 3. Colossians 1. He said, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of of this mystery among the Gentiles. What is that riches? Christ in you. So there is the deceitfulness of riches. There is the anti-type of the riches that is in Christ. That Satan will bring to a Christ company for them to leave Christ. And that anti-type is called deceitfulness. Pastor, if it's deceit, also, you know one thing I fear about deceit? In deceit, you believe it. Eh? It's so real. It's so real. I remember there was a time someone, elderly, elderly, I had they entered the bus. I'm sure a lot of us have heard that story. Entered the bus. It's always taxi they use. And entered the taxi. After entering the taxi, met somebody that said he's a policeman. The old son said, okay. Somebody just started shouting, I'm not going again. I'm not going again. Why are you not going? I'm not going. He said, what's the problem? No, no. He wants to cheat me. Calm down. What's the issue? Uh, he said, that lady, she kept dollar in the back. Ah. Every Nigerian, your antenna, pew, dollar. So, the next thing, they said there was jazz on the dollar. Okay. A prophet, alas, was inside the vehicle. He said, me, I'm a jazz remover. Everybody was complete. No, we'll take her to police station. I'm a policeman. Dressed in police uniform. Don't go to police. I am here. I will sort out the matter. Now, after they finished it, sir, pastor, this person was in deceit. Even after they collected money, and collected money, he collected money. When they say, no, these people are lying, he said, no, they are not lying. He's a prophet. Ah! These people are for one. I said, no. <laughs> so when Satan wants to deceive us, he brings riches. I said, these riches, it's not what we think as riches. These riches are also thoughts. Because the riches that Christ will bring, which is, he said, is Christ in you. Eh? So how would Christ enter into you, my brother? It's by thoughts. He said, the word I speak, I speak it unto you. They are spirit, they are life. 
But as they are entering into you, they are forming another life. God said about our pastor, Pastor Maker said one time, he said, from God's side, eh, it is life. For you to move from God to you, it has to, tra- it has to be transported through a medium called light. So that life has to be converted to light for it to come to you. When it comes to you, you need to relate with the light with understanding. When you now understand it, you now know that life, you convert it to life. So there is a mechanism that has to be in you to convert light to life. And when it's now converted to life, it becomes your life. So they move it from their world to our world. In them is life. He said, in him was life. In him. If you search him, the only thing you can find in him is life. You meet Jesus, the son of God, seated upon the throne. What he has is life, everlasting life, and eternal life. He has all the fullness of life. Scripture said he pleased God that in him should all fullness dwell. So what is dwelling in Jesus is all fullness. So all life is in him. So for him to transport that life to us, to become our life, it comes through the media of light. So when that light comes, I convert the light to life, to now begin to live by it. The same way Satan would, he also have what is called his own deceitfulness. It's called deceitfulness of riches. It's also a life that is in him. Because Satan is a deceiver by excellence. When he deceives us or deceives man, man would keep the deception and tell Satan, don't worry. If it is all day, if it is all day, me. <laughs> eh? he said, everything you have not said, I understand. I will keep the rest for you. A man can be in deceitfulness of riches yeah. eh? in religion. And he won't know about it. And he's there, staying, convinced. Wearing trousers will take you to hell. I know it. And you can't convince him out of it. I remember there was a time somebody, I think we had a wedding. You know, those days, a lot of wedding in our midst. People will come and say, wow, I love the love in your midst. You pull have wonderful come. You say, but, but, you don't wear scarf. So lovely people, wonderful. But that one is wearing trousers. See their lipstick. Now, for us, you don't know what... That walk looks like an innocent walk. But that's a deceitfulness. That has ability to choke the word. Eh? So word comes. Word can stay. Because there is a riches in that, in that soul. There is something that soul is rich in. It's so rich that no matter, you bring the word, it will choke it. You bring the word, it will be unfruitful. So I said in the beginning that minds can be Gentilic. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17. You see that Gentile mind that is full of vanity is riches. Riches is called deceitfulness of riches. Satan is also a carrier of riches. He carries riches. He is, he is endowed with riches, negative riches. That when he gives it to a soul, it will be difficult for the soul to touch through riches. So you bring Christ the way of that soul. The soul can't take Christ. He can't understand Christ. Christ is just a trouble. Because why? Christ is also a riches that must displace that riches for it to stay. So, deceitfulness of riches can choke the mind. The same way, deceitfulness of sin. Deceitfulness of sin in Hebrews. He said, but exhort one another daily where it is called today, lest any of you be hardened. You see, this deceitfulness of sin is in the season of everlasting life. This is not just sin of sin and death. This discipline of sin can cause a Christ company that the ground 
has been made soft. You know, if you look at that parable of the sower very carefully, you saw that they were walking upon the earth. Eh? It was progressive. Christ was walking upon the earth. They were breaking the earth. From wayside, they were breaking it. Moved to stone, they were breaking it. Changing the capacity. Because if you look at it very well, of course, how will somebody grow, something grow on the road? How? You plant it, boom, it's gone. Even just foot parts that people pass, pass, you will know nothing can grow there. Because every day, people are walking there. So the, the state of every soul initially is like wayside. Traffic. A lot of activities going on there. A lot, a lot. People are coming, walking every day. They are selling, they are buying. The guy is so, the mind is so wired with vain thoughts. He can't just break free from vain thoughts. Somebody posted something today. I looked at it. I said, wow. I, love, I wanted to reply to it. I said, I love this thing. They saw a dog on the leash. The leash, they call it the word of God. The dog is the mind. The other one is a dog that had no leash. The dog was inside garbage. And the, the owner of the mind, which is the man, was looking at the guy. Why would you not just, they call the, the garbage, um, is it lies or vanity or lies or something, lies. He said, why would, why would you stay out of the garbage? The guy with the dog with the leash said, you need to put it on the leash. You need to put the mind on the leash. Because if the mind is not on the leash, if the word, if another riches is not coming to the mind, every mind you see walking upon the face of the earth is rich. Sir? With something. Every mind is rich. There is no poor mind. What makes a mind poor is Christ. What improves the mind of vain thoughts is Christ's thoughts. So if Christ is not brought your way, if Christ's thought is not visiting the mind, that mind is rich. You see a professor, he's a rich mind. You see a cat pusher, he's a rich mind. You know, because we think he's just only a professor. No, you see a cat pusher, he's a rich mind. A vulcanizer is a rich mind. Eh? I used to know someone, very lovely person, wonderful, behavior, very humble. Humble. You have your humble. But money just began to come. Money began to come. And so I said, no, don't come, don't talk to me like that again. Eh? <laughs> Did you leave yourself? <laughs> eh? So riches has been there. So I see many of us, we walk around with riches. And we are refusing to leash our mind by word. It's what they call deceitfulness of riches. You know, you can just read that place, read it and pass. Uh, deceitfulness of riches. Okay, ah, ah, Oluwa Yeni. Oluwa Yelelei. Sorry, permit me. I know we have on here. Oluwa Yeni means rich, rich man of this world. Eh? Thank God I don't have money. It's all these people like spending dollars, spending pounds. Ah, the kind of suffering they will suffer. They have choked the word out of them. In their life, no word can grow. They are choked. Word. Word cannot stay. You'll be shocked a man staying in Najigule. Word cannot stay. He's richer than a man staying in Buckingham Palace. Eh? Richer. Full of things. Full of ideas. I saw a man, I saw a young boy on, on TV. Nigerian, pastor. The boy is 21. This boy no go to school. He spoken English. You know that he's not literate according to the order of what we call literate in English speaking. Eh? Uh, waiting at the thing, say, I just the plan, say, that's so they talk. Eh? He's not literate in your English speaking. But you see what this guy is fellowshipping with? He has riches. The guy will tell you, he, he cannot sleep. He said the thing wakes him up around three. And he begins to think. He has done a car. His plan is not to do a car that is moving on water. A car you can drive in water, it will come out and come out and keep driving. That has engine. He said he can't sleep. He said he can't sleep. Now, if he just, if he just wake up like this, 3 a.m., they just wake him up, and the thing will begin to stream. So you see, a soul that did not go to your natural four walls of a school. He didn't go to school to learn. He didn't have a lecturer teaching him. Eh? But the man is rich. The young man is rich. He knows plenty of things. 
His father fought him and sent him out of the house. He said he doesn't care. He's, he went to be sleeping in garage because he was rich. So when he said deceitfulness of riches, don't let's be too quick to think is is a deceitfulness that fights a Christ company. Because Christ also has riches. Hebrews chapter 11, they talked about a man called Moses. Hebrews 11, I think that should be, is that 20, 26? Thank you. He said, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches. Kai. So Christ has riches. Egypt also has riches. Egypt has treasures. The house of death also has riches. He said, damn the treasures in Egypt. So there was treasure also in Egypt. If they are treasures, what are they? They are riches. But Moses esteemed the reproach. You see, the riches of Christ, he called it reproach. <laughs> eh? So at times when you want to take a stand for Christ, when you want to marry that brother that is uncomely, when you want to marry that sister that is uncomely, when you want to live in that one-room apartment, which is what your grace can capacitate, one room, it looks uncomely. It looks like, no, 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 no. I can't. You know, you can actually fight your way out of that Christ riches. You can fight your way. You can fight your way very easily. You can jailbreak, scatter the thing. I can't suffer like this. I will, I will make it. With God, I go make a more. With God, I go make a more. Is it with Satan? No, with God. Eh? And God knows. There is no. <laughs> if you don't give you riches, boy, we scatter things. So we can we can break free out of Christ's riches. You know, Christ's riches is a box. Eh? He's the one that has to lead you to where all the treasures are in that place. Eh? He has to lead you, he has to take you by hand. So there are arrangements of making us rich. A man can be rich in Christ. A man can actually be free from what is called deceitfulness of riches that attacks Christ's company. That gives us a, a negative riches. You know, at times when our parents and pastors, when we talk like this, it looks like we are saying that cut off from the world, don't have anything to do with the world. No, no, no. Paul said, as using this world, you can actually use this world. And not abuse it. Now, for you not to abuse it, somebody has to teach you how to use this world. And that's where the Christ riches come. So there is the deceitfulness of riches. Why is it called deceit? Eh? Why deceit? Because Satan, if if he's not deceit, you won't go for it. Abby? They need to make it real. As possible. I remember those days, Pastor Joe, remember those days, you know, my church then, we, we had it, we were all in drama units because of all youths, young men, everybody's in drama. I, I used to act, act drama. So we had this drama we were acting then, very, very lovely drama. It wasn't church, I, I wasn't church. I don't know where it was church, it wasn't church. You know, church was uh, our classic then, it was a classic. We had a drama called The Church. So in this drama, there was young men that were people there that they gave egg, normal egg, chicken egg, not table tennis egg, chicken egg, real egg, chicken. Don't confuse it. Chicken egg. You know, chicken egg is more like golden in color. Abby. Now the deceiver came, and the deceiver was holding a golden ball, a lambo. Eh? I need to just carry the zone and stayed with people that were carrying egg. And after staying for a while, he just did like this. <laughs> eh? His own egg. Just bound it again. I just. So everybody was wondering, how come this your own is it's coming back? <laughs> Bam! He just bounced it again. He's a deceiver. You know, Pastor was saying on 
th on Thursday, School of Spirit. He said he would take gold from you <laughs> and give you panda <laughs> costume. <laughs> yeah? So he would just bounce it again, bam. I just hold it back. He's not saying anything, no. But he's, he's speaking volume. So you see, when Satan many times corner us in a place, eh? you see, any thoughts, any thoughts that puts fear in you, any thoughts that makes you want to run, eketa, seketa, that you just want to keep running, any thoughts, any thoughts, just know this thing does not have the strain of the life of God. Eh? God's thoughts are faith thoughts. God's thoughts are hope thoughts. God's thoughts are charity thoughts. It will cause a man to be stable. He said you're being rooted. When something is rooted, it's not moved. Being grounded. You're not just staying rooted. Grounded. So you need to be established. So when you are being established, you are not in a hurry. A thought that will make you think, I will be 35 this year. A girl. And nobody. Not even one that I broke up. No, just one that I broke up. That everybody knows that at least I can enter a relationship. It's just that you broke up. No, no, you don't understand. I, at least I entered one. But it broke up. So have you ever, no, I've been one, but it broke up. But this one, no, no breakup. Nothing has broken. I've not broken any record. I'm still intact, unbroken. And I'm 35. You see, at that time, somebody's bouncing an island ball. I'm passing by you. You are carrying egg, but he's bouncing his own island ball. Now, the unfortunate thing about the drama is that egg has no replacement. So, they were all carrying it. And they told them, he should not follow. Don't let him follow. If he fall, he do get another one. No? Eh? But alas, the deceiver just walked in. Deceitfulness of riches. That's ability to choke word. Choke word. He just walked in and bounced his own. My eyes have seen. My eyes have heard. My mouth will talk about the goodness of God. Hallelujah. My eyes have seen. My eyes have heard. My eyes have talked about the goodness of God. Wow, okay. My eyes have seen. The guy is just, he's just bouncing his own, doing his own, eh? and speaking volume. So you see Satan cornering us many a times, just bouncing a Lambo, and passing, and speaking volume. He's just bouncing a Lambo. He, 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 did he tell you to break your egg? Yeah, I, I, did I tell you anything? You carry egg, I carry my own egg. My own egg, they bounce. I don't know about your own, no. If it's bounceable, hmm? But I didn't see anything. I'm just bouncing my egg. So many a times, he will come around us bouncing egg. Bouncing egg that he knows that your own is not bounceable. <laughs> he will bounce it. So when, when did you finish NYC? Ten years ago? Ten years. <laughs> eh? Ten years. One, two, three, four, ten. Ah. Ah. Have you gotten a job before? Uh, I went to do one contract in one company like that. But it was just voluntary, voluntary work. But it was when they were not, I kept going. When I scored that, I was borrowing money to go all the time. I stopped going. So you've not gotten a job? Ten years. Ah. Your life has finished. Kilo Waiwashi. So for 10 years, you don't, no plan, no future, nothing. Ah. You see what he's doing? He's just bouncing island ball. Because you know why? The life of a man, the life, except you are holding a deceived life, the life of a man does not consist 
there is what is the constituent of the life of a man. That is what is the, uh, the properties or the materials that are in, the, in what is called the life of a man. So when the life of what you call your life is in the... He said, and he said unto them, take it and beware. Beware of covetousness. Now when Jesus was bringing this judgment, he looks like, what kind of a wicked man is this? Very off a judgment. Because somebody came to you to ask a very sincere question. We are just two. We are not three. Two, just two, two, very two. My father had two, 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 one, two, one, two. And alas, the man is dead and he's gone. Now, my brother wants to take everything. No, 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 no. Give me, give me his number. Hello, Mr. Tunde? That's a very bad thing. Don't be that bad. This is wickedness. I mean, it's just you and your brother. Do you want your brother to suffer? You want him to die in penalty? The guy said, I met him now. He hasn't hit him for the past three days. No, 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 no. And your father is a rich man. He has house in Lekki. He has house in Ajayaba. So, okay, just give him. How much is it? Everything. 500 million. Okay, give him 1 million. Just give him something. Abba, don't be wicked like this. That is a judgment. And anybody that hears you give that judgment will tell you, Abba. Eshe. Allah born Solomon. The wisdom of Solomon. Thank you. This is a very wise counsel. But you see, Jesus looked at the man and said unto him, Beware of covetousness. Ha -ha, take it. This same take it again. Take it and beware of covetousness. Beware. For a man's life, that is where Jesus was talking from. That is what Jesus knows as what is called life. What we think is life is death. What we are romancing as life. I want to build house. Is it wrong to build house? No. Eh? I want to drive a car that has AC. Is it wrong to drive a car that has AC? No. Eh? I remember so many years back, you know, I just moved to Shobande then and... Alas, this is me, the geology, geology, you know, the, all, your, all my thoughts is oil company, you know, make it. Go to Portacourt, get job, come back, big boy. Hello? Mommy, please send me your card number. I want to send you five million. Big boy. That's thoughts. You see, that thought is riches. Somebody painted a picture for me. This is how you should live. And that's life. But you see, he never told any one of us what he was painting to us as a picture. He's dead. That the more you prosper in that thing, the more you die. So, alas, I think, was I even married then? I think I was married. I think so. I think so. I don't even know. Forgotten. I think I was married. And my wife, we go to work. I salary then. I should not say it. Highly ridiculous. Even me that I was not working, I would be saying, okay, let's go and look for transport money. Just go and do this job that is paying you nothing and come back. <laughs> eh? <laughs> so, alas, that day I went out. Adi day, it was not, it's not far from my place. And I decided to say, okay, I want to go and buy something. In fact, the way I was dressed, if you see me, you, you yourself will run. It's not me that will run, you that will run. I wore slippers. One, one short. I <laughs> wore just any top. And I just saw a classmate. Classmate, he was driving RAV4 of that year. Of that year. Allah Baya Barada. Shanta Balego de Stafaya. RAV4 of that year. Of that year, sir. Alas. 2011. Brand new. Tia Roba. Eh? Immediately I saw him. Run for your life. So I, I just wanted to hide. I said, say, why can't you? you should hide for something like this? Go and greet him. Thank God I was able to respond to another riches. Because if not, I would have gotten back home that day and I would be in depression. 
thinking. Thinking. We graduated together. The same school. The same course. In fact, it wasn't the very prominent one then. Me, everybody knew me when we were graduating. They so know me that even the HOD knew me. Head of the department. One of the days I was in one of the lecturer's office, you know, doing something for him. One of the senior lecturers. I was just doing something for him. Ah, he now came in. He made the HOD, HOD came in. I knew, I knew it was my HOD professor. Okay, ah, ah, so, sorry, sir. I, I left. After I left, somebody just, everybody was looking for me. He said, ah, prof, he's looking for you. Ah, kilo shele. What, what did I do? So I went to prof. He said, no, 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 I just wanted to tell you that I'm done with doctor. You can go back. <laughs> I said, I'm dead. My HOD, I'm in trouble. So imagine somebody that popular. You now met a classmate that is not popular. And he's not driving RAV4. He's not driving Kia. You don't be scared. You can say, Kia no wa Kia. It's just Kia. Eh? He's not driving the Uresa. He's driving Toyota. Toyo. You know what Toyota is in Nigeria? Toyota. RAV4 of that year. Of 2011. That year. It's enough for me to run. But I knew it was a riches versus riches. So I had to, I had almost, I said, no, I need to face this thing. <laughs> I go and face it. Is it that shame? Chop it, rub it, greet him. Ah, how are you? How are you? How are you? As I was greeting, I was looking at myself, slippers, you know what? How are you? How are you? Why? It was a riches that was confronting me. So Jesus told him, a man's life, a man's life does not consist in Rafa of that year. Not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. So if there be anything that I need to possess, it should be Christ's riches. So the deceitfulness of riches would deceive a Christ company against the riches that Christ offer. But you see, there's another deceitfulness that Paul began talking first in that verse 12. That let there be no evil heart of unbelief in you. In departing. Because the activity of this evil act, it can cause a soul to depart from the living God. You know, the church, the Revel a church in Laodicea, Revelation chapter 3, Jesus said to them, he said, you say you are rich. Eh? That was an everlasting church. Abby? It was an everlasting church. He said, you say you are rich. He said, but you are poor. You are wretched. He said, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods. I am Christ. And I've also increased more than Christ. He said, but you have nothing. Because somebody has already deceived you. So let's look at that other part as I just begin to round up gradually. Uh, the, that deceitfulness of sin that can cause a soul to become hardened. Numbers chapter 13. Give me Numbers. Just look at that story of the, the 10 spies. You know, they've, they've just finished a Christ curriculum. Eh? They were about crossing into the land. They were about entering into everlasting life. They are entering into another phase. Numbers, numbers 13. Um, let me see where a convenient place we can start from. Are we, are we being blessed? Numbers 13. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Is it 13? Yes, I think it should be 13. Yes, Numbers 13. Let's start from verse 26. Is it 26? When they went to spy the land, if you, if you see it, give it to me. Is that the place?
Okay. He said, and went and they went and came to Moses and Aaron. No, I, there's a place I want to read before them. Okay. He said, and Moses, verse 17, and Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what the land is that what the land is that dwell that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that dwell that they dwell in, whether it be tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether it be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage and bring the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first, first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob as the men came into Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came into Hebron, where Ahiman, Shishai, and Tamai, the children of Anak, were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto, unto the brook of Eskor and cut down from the branch with the cluster of grapes and the beer that he bared with them upon two upon a staff, <laughs> and they brought and they brought of the pomegranate and of the figs. The place was called the brook of Esco because of the cluster of the grape with the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back words unto them, unto all the congregation and shewed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, and said, we came into the land without thou sentest us. And surely it flowed with milk and honey. Surely. Surely. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. The people be strong. That dwell in that land. The cities are world. And very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekite dwell in the land of the south, and the Etites and the Jebusite and the Amorite dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanite dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We are not able. Ah. You know? It was Pastor Thompson on Thursday when he was saying, when he was ministering. Pastor said, he said there are a lot of things that we have not counted as sin before. Hmm? A lot of things that we've not seen as sin. But you see, the way light is shining now is as if everything around you is sin. You just take one thought. They say, ah, this one you have seen though. <laughs> you want to do this one in your mind innocently. <laughs> Say you have seen again. <laughs> Say, okay. It's like we are, not, we are not able. If this matter is like this, pastor, we are not able. Who can be saved? Because everything is now looking as if, as it were, sin. So they replied, let's just read it through. Then we just um, trust the Lord to build a thought around it, connecting it to Hebrews chapter 3. And we just uh, begin to bring the meeting to a close. He said, and... But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against these people, for they are stronger than we. Now, how can you conclude a man you have never battled with that is stronger than you? Eh? That's the wrong conclusion. So somewhere, at times, we look at some sin matters some issue of hell and death, it'd be stronger than we. Yeah? Hey, no, let's be sincere. i give an example. Think no evil. Think no evil. Today alone, and now many people have thought about Buhari. I know many people have thought about your neighbor. 
I know how many evil we've thought. But is it possible? Is it possible that Jesus is thinking evil? Eh? Is it possible? Is it possible? Not possible. Strand of evil thoughts cannot cross the radar of his thoughts. And they said, be ye perfect as is perfect. So, are you sure we will not sound like those other 10 guys and say we are not able? Eh? Let's look at it sincerely. Evil out of unbelief in departing from the living God. Eh? You know, it's easy to say, ah, Hebrew church, ah, they have evil out of unbelief. Eh? We are getting to those zones when a lot of things begin to confront us, where your judgment concerning men, eh? your conclusion concerning men, they are narrowing down on it. They are looking at thoughts that probably you've taken in crisis, maybe concerning your husband, concerning your wife, and it looks, quote and unquote, excusable, but light has increased. You take that same thought, because already you are used to it, you've used the thought before. You take that thought again and they say it is a sin. So, it's almost looking like we are looking, like, we are looking at an insurmountable mountain that looks impossible that, okay, these people be stronger than us. We can't take them. Give me that place back in, in numbers. Let's just say, he said we'll be not able to go against this before they are stronger than we, one. This is their report, one. Second one. And they, no, no, no. Is that the next verse? Eh? Is that the next verse? Okay. He said, and they brought up an evil report of the land, of the same land, of the same, the land flowing, the first report they said concerning it. We love this everlasting life. It's flowing with me, Canoni. That's the land. Truly, everlasting life, do. It's flowing with me, Canoni. But let's now begin to look at what we'll face in this everlasting land. They now said they brought up an evil report of the same land they declared earlier that it was flowing with me, me Canone, which they searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search, this land, is a land that they chop in they chop in people. Oh. Anybody that enters that land, it will eat you. And all the people that we saw. In it, a man of great stature. Next verse. And there we saw giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we, I don't understand this place. We were in our own sight. Now, this is, before they talked about their own sight, he said we, by ourselves, when we turn and look at ourselves, we are like grasshopper. And so we were in their sight. Now, they didn't meet any one of them. They never had a discussion to say, how do we look to you? But they concluded. Is it the same way we conclude about some matters of life everlasting? For example, I'll give us an example. When mommy was talking about it, mommy preaching at Lekiso said that when she began to open the issue of love your enemy. Pray for them that despitefully use you. You see, those are things that they land. This land that we are crossing into or we have crossed into. Our parents have crossed into. These are the reports of that land. These are the things that will make that land not devoid any man. Eh? Ability to love your enemy. Ability to pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, when those things confront us, those are sins that we will say we are not able. Eh? Those are places where the deceitfulness of sin and an evil lot of unbelief will begin to work. I just feel I can't do this. I can't do this. Pastor, it's because you don't understand. You don't understand. If you understand what the issues are, what this person has done. 
You know, one thing, mommy keeps saying it over and over. Some people, you say they are not, they don't have your lingua, eh? they don't have, they don't know how to break it down. There's life, there's everlasting life, there's eternal life. They don't have the lingua, but they have the life. Eh? Now, God is not about lingua. If I measure it out to you, and you do it, you have it. You have the lingua, you are not doing it, you don't have it. Why we keep talking about Joyce Meyer? Now, does it make any sense? How, ask me, how would I forgive that my biological father molested me, slept with me in any place you can ever think of, graveyard, inside car, outside car, on the road, everywhere, inside grave, inside everywhere. Eh? That man, all I need is a gun and a bullet. I won't miss. <laughs> I will target, I will train for years, I will target the right place. Pow! Once, he's gone. Or I'll just wait for him to sleep and take a knife or blade. No blade is very sharp. Just. <laughs> you need to go. You are, you're a beast. You're not a human being. <laughs> eh? But you see that woman? They measure out the commandment to her of the land. Of the land. And what's the commandment? She wrote it in a book. Do yourself a favor. Forgive. It is a do, it is a do yourself. So she had an experiential experience with the land. With what can devour a man. With sons of Anak. Eh? With a heart that she can take as a heart, evil heart of unbelief, and decide not to believe that God has said that this land is for us, and I can take it. God has said that everlasting life is our portion. And in everlasting life, a man will journey to a place according to scripture. He that is born of God does not sin. It looks impossible. But it's possible. Because God said it, I believe it. A man can get to a place he would not sin because he's born of God. So she wrote that book. Do yourself a favor. Forgive. Now God commanded her. He said, your father, you've been trying. You're taking care of him. He said, but don't you think where he is is too far? He's very far. Bring him close. Bring him close. That's commandment of the land. You see, at that time, at that time, what she's seen is sons of Anak. That this commandment, I am like grasshopper in your sight. I can't do it. So there are commandments they will bring to us in this season. What do they want to deal with? They just want to make us as our father. Matthew 5, 48. Be ye perfect. Even as your father in heaven is perfect. So, you see this, this thing? He is spying the land. Because they will bring commandments about this place. And when you bring the commandments, one of them will just look like Anak. And when you see the commandments, he say, you, commandment, I am like grasshopper in your sight. In fact, I am grasshopper. I can't do you. But God is saying, no. Forget about that thing. You can forgive. Now, the person has hurt you. It's so deep. It's painful. But you can forgive. Do you want to enter the land? You want to possess the land? You want to hit the land that is flowing with milk and honey? Then forgive. So, there are going to bring commandments. And when those commandments will come, Satan would also come what, with what is called evil heart of unbelief. What God is saying is not true. You should not do this. If you do this, this person will take you for granted. He will do it again and again and again. He will never learn his lesson. But you see, it's not about the person learning his lesson. It's about me. I want to live. I remember watching a film one time. It was a film of a robot. And it was just one statement. The robot kept saying, somebody wanted to kill the robot. I want somebody met the robot on the road. He said, I want to live. I want to live. That should be our watchword. I want to live. I just want to do life. I don't care how strong the sin is. I don't care how much that sin has, 
has said that I would not be free. All I know is that God has given me a guarantee in his word and I am so sure that because the word of God is true, I am going to live. God wants us to live. God wants us to do life. Do life to the point where no sin, pastor, no sin will touch our body. It was that the gospel of Pastor Maker that said it. He said, the body responded to sin. Sin. He sin. Lashay. He sin that we did, that we became, when you say someone is 70 year old, they say 70 year old man. Eh? And my daughter looked at Moses. You know, the way they drew Moses. He's also, a, I don't know Moses, whether Moses was like that. I don't know. I don't think so. They drew him with beard, white beard. He said, Moses is, ah, my daughter said, Daddy, Moses is very old. I say it's not very good, don't mind them. It's just 80. Eh? It's sin that gave us that conclusion. That when you see a particular thing, you say this thing is like this. But God wants to raise a people. The labor of God's servant, our parents over us, is that they want to raise a people that their judgment will be concluded in righteousness. That when they think, they are not thinking themselves to the grave. They are thinking themselves to heaven. He said, if, if you be risen with Christ... If, 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 if you be risen, and I know they've preached many of us risen. They've preached us till we are risen. God's servant has labored over the years, preached us till we are risen. He says, so if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. So we are meant to be seekers of things above. Now, if a man is seeking what is from above, what will he become? An above man. So Jesus looked at them. He said, I am from above. What I seek is above things, but you are from beneath. So a man also can be a beneath man. So an above man, an above man, an above man, nothing present, nothing in this sphere, nothing, on that, on, nothing, nothing in hell can touch an above man because the man is in heaven. He talked about the son of man. He said, the son of man, which is in heaven. He was walking upon the face of the earth. He was walking up and down in Galilee, eating bread, chopping corn, but he was in heaven. So there is nothing earthly that can touch him. So also, they want to bring a people to heavenly realm. You see, this heavenly realm that God's servant, that they keep talking about, throne, throne, is real. Oh. Throne is not a sito. Oh. Throne is a life. Throne is what is in you. Anywhere you are, the throne is with you. Eh? If God moves to earth now, throne is with him. It's, it's life. To sit on the throne is not just, it's not, because, come to think of it, billions have died. I've gone to heaven. I don't know how many of them would have made it up to the throne. But billions, multitude are coming. Many will come, sit upon the throne. Even if the throne is just a seat of 100,000, won't it be looking funny? That they now put big seats. We are so, 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 taking to go. We are shift, 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 shift. No, that's not the throne. It's a reign of a life. Is a reign of a life. So a life wants to find a place into us. That you enter into a good state, a throne has entered. A life giver. That as you enter, you just know that life has come. Everything that has to do with death is taken. I can't, I can't survive the thought of this guy. You know, Pastor was talking about our Pastor Pastor on Tuesday. He said, Pastor Tyre's mind has become Christ. Eh? The way Pastor Tyre's mind is wired. It, his thoughts, bah, 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 it's Christ. Somebody made it. I see that thought will also still be raised to become everlasting. Yeah. That you are thinking, you are not thinking. I say, uh, how old are you now? Uh, 70. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, very soon. Baba will go. Baba will go. Ah, Baba did Dagba. 70. Ah, old man. Eh? But you just see a man of 70, he's not even seen death. His thoughts, he's just fellowshipping with eternal and everlasting things. He's fellowship with eternal thoughts. He's fellowship with if angels just be. I want to come and stay with this guy's house. I want to just stay in his house for the next. It's like this guy was just been under 40 years. So the way I'm looking at him, sir, excuse me, can I take leave in heaven? I just want to be around this guy. He's thought that to, ah, this is judgment. See the way this guy, the judgment is bringing. And that's what God wants to raise us to be. So I want us to have so much faith in this season. So much faith that these things are real. You see what God's servant that is laboring over preaching concerning every day, it is real. 
Sin has an expiry date. Hell and death can end in a soul. There is a time that it will stop. The labor, the trouble, the struggle we have that, oh, hey, would I ever be free from this thing? Oh, the sister just talked to me one how, and I'm feeling bad. I can't, I've, I've been, I've been, if I can't even greet her well again, when I see her, my heart will do boom. I know that I have a gallop inside of me. Hey, hey Lord, when will you take this away? It will go. Keep the mind on the leash. Just keep feeding it. Keep feeding it with thoughts of life. Keep feeding it. Don't be tired. Keep feeding it. A time will come. All you would ever think of, all you would ever think of will be things of everlasting life. All you would ever resolve in your mind will be things of eternal life. And that's where God is taking us to. That's where they want to bring us into. I want us to have so much faith. In my, honestly, in my heart, I just, I don't know. I'm just having so much belief that these things are possible. Well, parole, they are not lying. Rebecca, they go, okay, he's not lying. He's saying the truth. He lie not. These things are real. I can love you sincerely. I can love you not because I know that if I love Pastor TJ, because he's my friend, if I do something, he will do something back. I can be, I can get to the point where my thought is not wired around that. You know, many times we still, somewhere, sincerely, we still suspect ourselves. Just feel that this brother must not know everything I'm doing. If you know now, be thinking, hmm, that's a smart. We are brethren, you no? Know? Those are smart, are wise, or else now. They will. You see those things? Those thoughts would expire. Eh? Imagine Jesus hiding things from God. Say, okay, ah, ah, if I go to hell now, go and see TJ. If God knows now, he will say, where, where did you go to and see TJ? Let me just cover it. When the thing happen, I will tell God. Eh? God sees Jesus true and true. Jesus is God, true and true. There is no hiding amidst them. In them is no darkness at all. How many of us know we can get there? You know that's their joy over us. That's what they want to see us come into. They just want to look at you and say, ah, we can, there's no darkness in now. Wow. There's no darkness in her. She's so clean. Ah, finally, this thing we've been doing, it has worked. Ah, I said it. I know it will work. We, Jesus, we tried it in you. And you became it. We know. You just need one. And that one will bring many sons to glory. We are part of that sons. We are part of who Jesus is going to bring to glory. Bring to everlasting life. And bring to eternal life. Can we begin to give thanks to our Father this evening? Can we begin to give thanks to God? Can we appreciate the Lord? Can we, can we pray and ask Father? Ask our Lord Jesus. I love the prayer of that man. He came to Jesus and said to Jesus, he said, I believe. I believe. He said, but help my own belief. In this state, in this sphere, in this zone I am in, in this zone of the reality of things everlasting, I believe, but Lord, help my own belief. Inject faith into my heart. Take away from my heart evil heart of unbelief. Inject your faith. Inject your life. He said, the just will live by faith. I want to obey the faith curriculum. Let faith enter into my soul. In the name of Jesus. <coughs> Faith for things eternal. Faith for things everlasting. Let it enter into my soul, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Inject faith into my soul. In the name of Jesus. Inject faith into my soul. Concerning the issue of sin and death. It will come to an end in my life. Concerning the issue of hell and death, it will come to an end in my life. I will bear your seed. I will live and I will abide. I will bear your seed. I will carry the seed of the everlasting God. In the name of Jesus, I will carry the incorruptible seed. In the name of Jesus. Yene barada la taligado, shashabarada la teligado se.